Hello everyone, it's time for soldering. Yay! What is soldering? Well, it's like gluing, only you're gluing with molten metal. Yeah, big difference. You know, um, I did the quick tip on the glues a while back, and some people gave me a hard time because I said that the hot glues are actually welding the two parts together and they're going ah, ah, ah. well they're dissolving the molecular bonds in the glue and they're allowing it to soften and you're pushing them together and it's rehardening because the solvent leaves this is not quite like welding this is like welding in some regards okay now what you need to do soldering is set of helping hands look for one that holds your soldering iron solder when you buy a soldering iron, it'll come with solder. We already discussed the types of soldering irons, whether you want a solder gun or a soldering iron, and we said soldering iron, okay? And I like mine because it has an on light. I can tell it's on. And also, look for one that holds a sponge. Sponge is necessary, okay? Now, keep in mind, I just put a new tip in the soldering iron, so it's behaving a little off from what I'm used to. Here's the old tip right here. All right, This had a pencil shape to it at one time. And over the years, it's just melted away. Over about a year, that's about a year and a half worth of use. It just melts away. They're designed to do that, so don't be disappointed when they go away. You're going to have to replace them. That's why they screw in and out. They have a screw tip on the end of them. All right, This is a fairly new tip, and the first thing you do with a new tip is you clean it. You want everything clean when you're working with your soldering iron. That's why you want a damp sponge down there. The contact between the water and the soldering tip, the heat in the soldering tip helps clean it. Okay? And you really can't touch that with your hands. Next thing you do is you take some of your solder and you put it on the tip. This is called tinning the tip. Alright? You don't really want to breathe that smoke, by the way. There's some bad stuff in that smoke. And that just helps the solder adhere to what you're soldering better. I'm going to put that back in this little holder over here to sit for a minute. Now, I'm going to do a couple of soldering feats. I got an LED here. It's a burned up LED, so no worries about whether I mess it up or not. Burned it up in the video, uh, the LED video. But I am going to solder a resistor to it. And what I like to do is I like to take my resistor and wrap it around the leg of the LED. I always put my resistors on the positive legs. Be honest, I don't think it matters whether it's on the positive leg or negative leg. I do. I also usually cut the ends of the legs down because they're pretty long right here. And if you're working with a small model, they're way too long. So you should cut the ends of the legs down. And I clamp one end in my helping hands. And I position my helping hands to hold the, hold the other end. Do not try to hold that and solder on your own. Impossible. You're going to hurt yourself. It's just the way it is. Soldering is not for, um, you know, the multitasker. That's what helping hands are for. That's what they're invented for. Now, I'm putting this on a white background so it'll be a little easier for you guys to see. And I think I'm going to raise this up some. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit more than that. There we go. All right, now soldering goes very, very fast. I'm going to warn you that if you're taking a long time to do it, you're doing something wrong. It should be very quick. Because these are tiny components. They don't take much heat to get the solder to work. Now, speaking of heat, the proper procedure is this. You take your soldering iron, you hold it where you want the solder applied. You heat up the parts for a little bit, then you touch the solder, and that's it. That is a solder joint. It is a very, very quick thing. The more practice you get at it, the quicker it becomes. Seriously, you don't want to take a long time. If you're soldering a timing chip, you know the longer that soldering gun's there on that timing chip, the more liable you are to fry the timing chip. It's just not a good thing to take a long time to do your soldering. I'm letting that cool for a little bit before I touch it. It's probably cooled enough by now because, again, these are not heavy parts. 
Okay. Now, how do I know I got a good solder joint? I start tugging on it. That's going nowhere. In fact, I'm afraid I'm going to start breaking things if I keep tugging on it any harder. It means I got a good solder joint. Another way to tell you got a good solder joint is, I know I zoomed in a little too much. Another way to tell you got a good solder joint is, see how shiny it is? Shiny solder joints mean the heat was applied properly. I heated it first, then applied the solder. Okay? If you try to apply the solder while it's cold, you will get dull solder and it won't be strong. All right, now, I'm going to solder a piece of wire to it. I'm going to repeat the same procedure. I'm going to take my piece of wire and I'm going to wrap this resistor lead around that wire. Now, part of the reason why I do this is I'm trying to make a thin, tight little joint. A thin tight little joint is better for shrink wrap. Speaking of shrink wrap, heat shrink too. You should put that on there before you solder. Because once you get the solder on there, that's a fatter thing and sometimes you can't slip the shrink tube over. Okay? So just keep that in mind and I, I, I've, I've made that mistake of not putting the shrink tube on beforehand and then having to cut apart a, a solder joint and redo it just to get the shrink tube up there. Because the shrink tube will insulate this leg from that leg. Alright, here we go. Got my solder, soldering iron. I'm applying heat. That's it. She soldered. That quick. Okay? I mean, literally that quick. So let me cut this off, get this off there, set her aside to cool. All right, now the next thing we're going to talk about these LED light strips. I was talking to um, some people over at SMA and Papa Smurf. I'll put the link to his channel at the bottom of the video. Some of you know who he is. He's building that wonderfully huge Enterprise E for a client of his. I mean, he has spent thousands of hours building that thing, and it is beautiful. He sent me an email saying, here's the proper way to solder wires on the end of those LED light strips. And after reviewing it, I had to agree. These LED light strips, let's zoom in a little bit on this. Okay. These LED light strips on the end have these copper discs every inch on them. And there's a line between the copper discs because that's where you're supposed to cut them. All right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my Tamiya handy drill and I am going to drill out a couple of holes. In fact, there's a couple of indentations in there that make me think these things are meant for you to drill the holes out with. A quick tip with the Tamiya handy drill, it'll take Dremel collets. I found that out looking on the internet. And why that's a big deal is the collet that comes with the handy drill it only takes a very limited range of drill bits. Now that I've got a Dremel collet in there, I can use micro, micro, small drill bits in this thing. And it'll keep me from killing myself when I'm drilling out like 150 holes in the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon with 0.5 millimeter fiber. And it really does look like there's already a hole in this. So I'm taking my handy drill. Drilling a hole in both the positive and negative lead. Using the paper on my desk not so I don't drill into my desk. Alright. I'm peeling back the uh, taped backing for the sticky side and cutting it off. So now I have two holes. I've already prepared some wire leads. And this is why I like my flat paddled wires because I can form hooks on these wire ends very, very quickly. And the hooks are going to allow me to do my soldering on this joint very, very fast. So I formed two hooks on my black lead and my red lead. Red's for positive, black's for negative. They are labeled on here which one's which. So I hook my wire through. You guys can see I got the wire hooked through. I am using my handy dandy helper hands. 
to arrange that let's zoom in so you guys can see the action the soldering action here and I take my soldering iron clean the tip off a little because it was building up some excess solder on it all right put some heat down on this and apply a little bit of solder and there she is again this is an incredibly quick process it is not slow if you're taking your time and you've got that soldering iron on there for a long time you're doing something wrong very very fast alright now since that end is hot I'm not putting my fingers in there to kind of cramp that down I'm going to use the pliers that's what they're for alright let's get that red one out of there and get the black one in kind of stretch it tight my soldering iron heat first solder second it's got some heat on there and there she is that's all soldered up you saw me move the soldering iron along it afterwards because the solder didn't line up where I wanted it to so I kind of scooted it along with the soldering iron that's soldered up let me strip the ends verify it's functional and then we are done with the soldering video Stripping the ends of the wires with my little wire strippers. There they are. Connect it to the negative lead of my power supply. The positive lead of my power supply. Give her power. And we have a nice rosy glow. So there you go. Pink LED light strip now has wires glued, uh, soldered to one end. She's ready for lighting a Millennium Falcon, if you will, a sunset, whatever you want, you know? Pink room at a hotel, whatever makes you happy. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed it.